Moving your discipleship journey from being discipled to disciple making is Jesus' desire for all of us. And it doesn't mean you have to be a perfect disciple to walk the journey with someone else or with a few people. Even though Jesus was perfect, he gave his command to imperfect followers like me and like you to go and make disciples. So no matter where you are on your discipleship journey, Jesus is asking you to invest in another person or persons to build his kingdom. Now, disciple making takes courage, commitment, priority, and sacrifice. You have to be intentional about it, and you have to value the time that it takes to invest in your own spiritual growth and the growth of another person. And do we have the time to be a disciple maker? Probably not. But we must realize that it's a priority to Jesus. And he wants us to make it a priority and to commit to whatever sacrifice it might take for us to give the time that we need to disciple others. Just like many opportunities in our life, we must choose what is priority. And we make those sacrifices so those things will happen. So, will you take Jesus' command seriously? One of the reasons we structured our Wednesday night discipleship in the way that we did was to not only for you to learn what it meant to be a disciple, but also to give you an experience of what it might look like for you to disciple others. The discipleship point was the learning part of the process, but the small group discussion and support was so that you could have an opportunity to be a part of what it could look like in your life to disciple others. As you poured into each other in those small groups, in discussion and stuff, that is what we were hoping for you to experience in learning how to disciple others. Now, you might not have been the facilitator of that group, or you might not even entered a lot into discussion, but you were present in that group to learn and to grow together. Remember the, dis the, de the definition that I shared last week? Discipleship is a relationship where we intentionally walk alongside a growing disciple in order to encourage, equip, and challenge him, them in love to grow toward maturity in Christ. That's what this is all about. It's just walking the journey together. And there are some necessary ingredients to produce this maturity in Christ. The first of which is relational vulnerability. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, relational vulnerability takes honest, self-disclosing, and confessional relationships that give the Holy Spirit the permission to remake us. 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now, this verse is not telling us to confess our sins so God will know what they are. God already knows. He knows every sin we've ever committed. It's not news to Him when we confess. The word confess really means to agree with. So confession is our agreeing with God what He already knows, our sins. Confession is our opportunity to be honest before God about our life and all its shortcomings and fail failures spiritually. We are disclosing to God what we might think we've hidden, and He hasn't found out about it. How silly that sounds, even to say that. That the God of the universe doesn't know what's going on in our lives. Or that we can actually hide something from Him. Remember in the Garden of Eden, after Adam and Eve had sinned, had eaten of the tree that God asked them not to, they hid, hoping He wouldn't know. Confession to God is for us to agree with what God knows and an opportunity to allow the Holy Spirit to remake us into whom God intended us to be what He created us. But the Bible tells us there's more about confession. James chapter 5, verse 16 says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other 
so that you may be healed. To successfully have relational vulnerability in a discipleship journey, we must be able to confess our sins, not only to God, but to each other. Talk about courage. When I am courageous enough to admit my shortcomings and failures, my sins to another person, that is when I am truly vulnerable and willing to let a person know who I am. To let them see the real me. And this is crucial to our growth in a discipleship relationship and in our growth spiritually. God is basically telling us that we need each other to allow and assist the Holy Spirit to do the process of healing us from sin and remaking us into whom He designed us to be. And that's why He commands us to enter into discipleship relationships. The questions that follow this point are designed to help you to begin to seek vulnerability and confession. And I pray that you have the courage to jump in with both feet. And I sent you the questions. Mm -hmm. Okay.